Oh, I never know how to start these things. Welcome back to another episode of The Factory. Apologies for missing a week there, but boy, do I have a show and tell to make up for it. We've been very busy making a lot of different products this week. Just to catch you up if you don't already know, PicoDev is our family of connectable modules that you can easily connect to your favorite development board of choice. So this was the micro bit uh, adapter that we looked at last time. Now it's complete and we have a few PicoDev sensor modules connected to it. And since last time, I also assembled and tested this Arduino shield. So that was a pretty simple assembly, just a little bit of surface mount soldering. Looking closely, there's a little bi-directional logic level converter on board. So since the Arduino is a five volt device and these PicoDev modules are a 3.3 volt I squared C bus, we do a little bit of shifting on board and there's just two PicoDev connectors to give you some options. And assembly and testing for this board went very smoothly, just assembling the six components that make up the logic level converter. So that's just a transistor and two resistors for each of the data and clock lines, putting on those PicoDev connectors and then soldering on the surface mount headers. And I actually insert the pin headers into the female headers on the Arduino and use that as a soldering jig for assembling this, just to make sure that everything lines up nice and straight. Now the Uno R3 is a pretty big board and this shield just gives you some PicoDev connectors. So to make use of the additional room, we've included a large prototyping area with some, with some power buses in the middle, another three volt power bus. And there's also some mounting holes so you can even take a PicoDev module and mount it onto the shield using some standoffs, either this way or this way, as you like. To test the shield, I just connected all the unique PicoDev modules together, plugged them into the shield, and ran a test script for each, just to check that that logic level converter is working with no problems. And we get some data streaming out for each type of measurement. We have temperature, the temperature, humidity, and pressure from the atmospheric sensor, and the light levels from the light sensor. Beauty. This is a Pioneer's platform for the Raspberry Pi Pico, and here you see it sitting on the expansion board that we discussed in the last episode. We have three locations to mount some PicoDev modules, and we have some breadboarding off to the right. I'm also working on a prototyping board. You know those like perforated, uh, solderable prototyping boards that will fit across two of these locations. So you can also do some prototyping soldering, and I think it might be nice if you can even snap it in half so that it could occupy, you know, just like a mini proto board just for one of these locations to give you some options. So I think this kind of electronics experience is great for beginner makers, uh, educators, and students because it locks everything down so that you can easily move the kit around and you don't start losing things. All the PicoDev modules are secured in place so you can create like a, an educational experience or create a specific project and you know that nothing's gonna go missing, at least none of the big parts. If I flip the Pioneers platform around, you can see there's a little laser etch showing you the outline of the expansion board. I've also included a footprint for just the Raspberry Pi Pico on its own. So if you have a Raspberry Pi Pico with pins soldered on, maybe if the pins are sticking up, you can just secure your Pico directly to the platform. With laser cutting projects like this, that's kind of like a zero cost feature. You just cut some more holes. Went through a few iterations to get to this design. I started off with a with a two by two PicoDev array, but I felt like that created too wide a platform. So the breadboard would go here, your Raspberry Pi Pico would go here. And with this two by two, it just stretched everything out a little too much. There's also quite a bit of wasted space above and below. This is an even earlier version still with the, the green proto board. You can see this one only has two locations and the PicoDev modules would feed into each other. But that's a bit of a pain because how do you get your connector in to such a small gap? So I finally arrived on this design, which has three locations for PicoDev modules, and you can mount them in any orientation you like. But I think the one that works best is with the connectors to the side. And so in this orientation, you can have a daisy chain going all the way up the column rather than having connectors going end to end, which I don't think works very well. The adapter for Raspberry Pi is in, and I've sent off the panelized design. This original prototype actually faced out of the board, but I don't think that works very well because if you want to put your Raspberry Pi in a case, you've now got this thing hanging out, flapping in the breeze. So I just flipped the design so that the connectors face inwards. 
So if you want to mount it in a case, now it fits within the envelope of the Pi. And the diehard Core Electronics fans may have noticed that last week we also released a little four-channel logic level converter. An absolute maker essential, this guy. This is the same circuit on the Arduino shield, just replicated for four channels. So you could have two independent I2C buses on this, or just four single channels. So where to from here? Well, I actually have a prototype laser distance sensor coming in to add to the PicoDev family. So this will grow by one more. Now here's a bit of a gotcha. All these PicoDev modules need to work with all of these development boards. There are good libraries for Arduino. I'm not so sure about packages in Python. So we're gonna have to do a bit of work there, particularly because the MicroPython implementation on the Raspberry Pi Pico is different to that on the MicroBit. It seems like the MicroBit breaks a few rules to make things really, really simple to get started programming. The difference is in the way that the I squared C bus is implemented. Now I'd really like to be able to have a single MicroPython module for each of these devices that just works across different implementations of MicroPython. We're gonna have a go at writing a module that can detect which piece of hardware it's running on and change how it handles the I squared C bus accordingly. So you have one Python module per sensor. So the Pico Dev journey continues next week with writing some libraries. If you have any good ideas about how we could have a go at implementing that, I'd love to hear them. From what I gathered, there's an, an OS module in Python that you can use to detect what piece of hardware you're running on. So I think that's gonna be extremely useful. So there you have it, a big old show and tell of new, of spicy new hardware. <laughs> if you're wondering what all these boxes are, those are all the large reels of headers that make that Arduino shield. They're massive. I think we, we looked at those in a previous episode as well. If you have any good ideas of what sensor modules you'd like to see in the PicoDev line of sensors, I'd love to hear about them on the Core Electronics forums. If you have any uh, design ideas for a Pioneers platform, how to make it more friendly to use, this is your last chance to get that in before I lock this design down and start cutting some acrylic. And yeah, see you in the next episode where we'll have a crack at making some Python modules from scratch. See you next time. Oh, 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 oh,